It's Brian Preston, the money guy. 20 year olds, this is, I mean, we titled this the biggest no brainer for success. But I also think this is the biggest vision for heartbreak. Everybody knows I've shared on the store on the show so many times. The entire reason that I am even the money guy is that I had a high school economics teacher that shared that if I could just save a hundred dollars a month, mm-hmm. I would be a millionaire by the time I reach retirement. So I tell you this is that everybody who's watching this episode right now, if you're in your 20s, if you're 20, 30s, even I'll say up to 40, Mm -hmm. and you don't reach retirement with seven figures or success, it's because you did it wrong. And that, that sounds harsh, but when you see the numbers, all of you that are watching this in your 20s, when you see how easy this is, you're going to know just the complete power of compounding interest and deferred gratification. I would go so far as to say that if you are someone in your 20s, you are the absolute easiest, simplest segment of the population to become wealthy. The deck is by far stacked so heavy in your favor because of the most valuable resource that you have, which is time. So you hear that. And you go, okay, this is the easiest group. So wealth creation is simple. But it's obviously not easy because mm-hmm. if it was easy, everybody would do it. And the stats show that you guys are screwing it up. Look, <laughs> listen to this. For You would think Fidelity does research. They're the biggest 401k provider, especially for Fortune 500 yep. companies. And they have done research on what are the biggest age groups that are taking distributions. Mm-hmm. Well, you think, well, that's obviously people that are retiring. Got to be the older folks, right? Yeah, the ones that are getting ready to retire. plus because people are retiring. They're getting the, the farewell parties. Mm-hmm. And that's when they start taking distributions. False. You know who the biggest distribution group is? People in their 20s. And I, this was mind-boggling to me. Because here's what stinks about taking retirement distributions in your 20s. Not only do you have to pay ordinary income tax on it on the federal level, if you live in a state, on the state level, but there's a penalty with it. So you actually get hit on the way out the door if you're taking distributions from your retirement accounts. So let's give stats on this. So I told you, sixty. what I would think is common sense of what the biggest group taking distributions, that's people 65 plus. Sure. 35% are taking distributions. Okay. The actual, the biggest group is 20 to 29-year-olds, 41% 41% are taking distributions. Guys, this number is probably going to go up because of 2020 and all the pandemic stuff. Sure. It scares me. So let this be something. Look, I know COVID was uh, just uh, something that caught us all out of left field. You might need this money. There's some special things where you avoid the penalties. You don't avoid the income taxes, but you do avoid the penalties. Make sure that it's your last resort. Don't, don't do this first. And then shortchange your retirement. And one of the things we talked about, Brian, is uh, we, we went around and kind of asked some of our folks in their 20s, hey, why do you think your peers are pulling this money out? Why do you think that they're doing this? And it was so funny. The thing wasn't, oh, well, because life is expensive or this thing happens or that thing happens. It was really more a little bit lack of knowledge. Oh, well, somebody just changes a job and they get a letter that says, hey, you can roll your 401k. And so you fill it out and you get a check sent to you and you put in your checking account. That is wrong. That is not what you want to do. When you leave employment, you want to do a direct rollover so that you don't trigger the taxes. Don't pull that money out yet because it is going to be too costly to get it. Make sure you keep your army of dollar bills intact working for you towards the future. So I can already hear, see people's brains. You, you, you know, you, you see the hamster wheel spinning in their head. They're like, but Brian, it's just two or three thousand dollars, mm-hmm. four thousand dollars. Guys, this is the secret of financial success. A little goes a super long way exactly if right. you're starting in your 20s. So let's talk about 88 times over mm-hmm. explained and what that means. So you're probably first. You heard me say, I heard when I was a junior in high school from my economics teacher, $100 a month would make me a millionaire. Yep. But walk us through, what does this mean for the typical person? Yeah, it's actually even better than what your high school economics teacher taught you. What we found is that if you are a 20-year-old and you would like to be a millionaire by the time that you get to age 65, and for our return assumption, we just assume that at 20, you start making 10%. And every year, it just decreases by 0.1%. So 10%, 9.9, 9.8, 9.7, so on. Well, if you just started saving $95 a month, every month from the age you're 20 until you're 65, 
you will have saved $51,300. Okay. However, I... at 65, remember the goal is to be a millionaire, you would have $1 million. Wow. Wow. So that means that you put in 51300 but the market, the earnings, the growth, the compounding interest is actually $948,700. So somebody who worked for a few years has a 401k balance that's like two grand. Mm -hmm. You think, why not just take the cash on that? Because that's what could two grand turn into? The reality of the situation is two grand might turn into $170,000 over exactly time. Right. So guys, take that into account. Think about that in the way when you're spending money as well as saving money. Every dollar you have when you're young is like turbocharged. Mm -hmm. So don't blow it. Don't screw that up. Don't make it that tearful event that I have is when I see that 20 to 29 year olds are the biggest distribution group from Fidelity. That's a failure. And here's what I think is interesting about this. If you're saving $95 a month, 95% of your million dollars is growth. There is one sad thing if you're doing this the traditional ways. You have to pay income taxes on every bit of that if you pull sure. it out. Yep. But guess what? 68.9% of employer plans actually offer a Roth option. Roth, oh my goodness, guys. If you want to turbocharge something, Roth means it's tax-free mm -hmm. in the future. So if we could turn this million dollars, if it was saved in a Roth 401k, a Roth 403b, it will be completely tax-free. Free. Unbelievable. Because, and so one of the things we get asked all the time is how do I decide if I do have Roth options, should I do the Roth or should I do the pre tax? It's really actually pretty easy. If you're young and you're in a lower tax bracket, you probably want to think about doing Roth. You don't necessarily need the tax benefit now. You'd rather have the tax benefit later. If you're older or perhaps you're in a higher tax bracket, pre tax may make the most sense. It's really that easy to make the determination. But let's, let's hit them with some, um, I kind of want to talk about the money guy way. Okay. On what they should have, mm -hmm. what they should save, and kind of what we did to Fidelity's research to make it even better for the money guy family. So Fidelity s came up with a study and they said, okay, if we take people at different ages, how much should they save to be able to replace a percentage of their income when they get to retirement? And the percentage of income that Fidelity wanted to use was 45%, which is fine. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. But we think that our Money Guy audience is a little more aspirational than that. Well, abundance cycle doesn't just stop with us giving you away free advice. Exactly we right. want you to live in true abundance in retirement. That's why I know we save, save 20 to 25%. Mm -hmm. You're like, wait a minute, save 20 to 25%. But when I'm 20 years old or I'm 23 years old, that seems crazy. Yep. Look, I get it. So we, we actually decided to go a step further and kind of walk you through some mathematics. So this is what we found first. How much should you save? We found that if you start saving at 20 years old, and your goal is by the time you get to 65, you want to replace 60% of your income. And we just assumed that every year through your working career, and we took this from Fidelity, your income increases at about 1.5%. We just yep. use that static. So you want to replace the future income that you'll have immediately pre-retirement. And we said, you know, let's assume that our investments can grow at a conservative 6% over the long term. We think that it can actually grow much better than that, but let's use a conservative 6%. If you're a 20 year old and your goal is to say, is to replace 60% of your income from 65 all the way till age 95, you need to save about 9% of your pay. That's how much, how much should I save? You should save 9%. That's pretty incredible. A lot of people are probably getting that just from their, their 401k yep. with their employer. You're getting that. And, and look, even 25 year olds, if you, if you're a person who's making under a hundred thousand dollars, 11% counting the employer match, mm -hmm. you're probably doing yep, that. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, and look at the 29-year-old, 14%. Guys, you're, you're starting to think, wait a minute, you're telling me you want me to save 20 to 25%. If 9% gets it done when I'm 20, if 11% works when I'm 25, and 14% and works when I'm 29, why are we doing 20%? Here is why, remember, abundance is not just built into the abundance cycle. Go ahead, Bo. So we said, if you take our advice and you do what we say and you say, you know what, I'm going to save 20%, we said, oh, obviously we're gonna probably be able to fund more than 60% of our pre-retirement income. What is that number? For a 20 year old that starts saving 20% at 20, continue saving that amount all the way until age 65, when they retire, 
they get a pay raise. They could actually live off 134% of their pre-retirement income, or more realistically, what does that mean? They could probably retire before age 65. For a 25 year old, they still get a pay raise. They can replace 105% if they don't start saving until they're 25. And then a 29 year old, if you're listening to this and you're about to turn 30 and you say, you know what, I'm ready to start, and you save 20%, just doing that from now until you get to 65, you'll be able to replace 86% of your pre-retirement income all the way through retirement. So I think that's worth repeating. For my 20 and 25 year olds, Bo didn't misspeak. If you save 20% of your income, and it, look, we get emails from you guys, a lot of you are saving 30 and 40%, mm -hmm. but if you're just saving 20%, there's a chance when you actually leave the workforce at 65, you will get a pay raise. Mm -hmm. You will actually make more money, but maybe you're not worried about a pay raise. Maybe what this gets you is that you don't have to work to 65. Maybe yep. this, if you have the thoughts, I want to quit work at 55. If I want to quit work at 50, you do need to be taking advantage of getting more. And then think about the person who's 29. You're like, look at this. You're like, man, I want to be over 100%. No. Realize when you retire, you don't need 100% of your income because you pay income taxes. You have Social Security. You want to cover living expenses. So 86% of your salary is still going to be an outstanding mm -hmm. retirement. That's powerful stuff. Yep. So we've shown you what the goal is if you're saving this percentage, but what does Fidelity say the average American has in their 20s? So when we look at it, the average 401k balance for someone in their 20s is 5,000. And because you guys had to call us out on statistical measures, the median 401k balance, no troll comments, is 13,200. So you can see, all right, is that good? Is it bad? Where does that fall? You guys are financial mutants. We want you to do better than average or even better than median. So we want you to have, by the time you're 30, by the time you're leaving your 20s, we want you to have 1.2 times your income. That should be your goal. If you've been saving the money guy way, the way that you're supposed to, by the time you leave your 20s, by the time you get to 30, you want to have 1.2 times your annual income. So make yourself feel better by looking at what the averages or the medians are but your goal should actually be to leave your 20s with 1.2. Love it.